I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about kept in heaven for you. Kept in heaven for you. We've been talking about over the last week or two here, we've been talking about this idea of supply and demand, about how in the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, there were all these demands put on the people, but they couldn't keep those demands. They didn't have sufficient supply or ability or power within themselves. To be able to walk in the standard, to be able to walk in these demands of the old covenant. They couldn't keep it. It was too much for them to keep. But then we say Jesus comes. Jesus comes and he turns the tables. Brings in this new covenant and the tables are now turned. Now God is the one who supplies. The old covenant demanded righteousness. The new covenant supplies righteousness. It demanded holiness. The new covenant supplies holiness. God gives us his grace and his wisdom and his love and everything he has poured out in Christ. He becomes the one who supplies. But supply and demand, you look at supply and demand, there's a supply chain. We have to learn how to receive God's abundant supply. It's sufficient for every demand that's coming out our way in life. And to get it flowing through us out into the world where we see the fruit of it or the result of it in our lives. And we talked about supply and demand in the marketplace ideally need to be balanced. Because if there's too much supply and not enough demand, then the problem is you get all this buildup and waste. Things are just spoiling on the shelves, these types of things. So there needs to be this balance of supply and demand. And we talk about where is God keeping this supply? Where is he keeping this supply? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says the heaven God has Heaven, it's the storehouse of his bounty. Deuteronomy chapter 28, he says he's going to release the storehouse of his bounty onto the earth for the people. We're going to take a look at some scriptures today, talking about how this abundant supply, this abundant supply, sufficient for every demand that comes our way, it's kept in heaven for us. It says we have this inheritance that will never rot or spoil or decay. And why is it kept in heaven for us? It's the safest place for it. No thief can break in and steal. It's not going to decay. It's not going to rust. No moths are going to eat it. It's waiting there in heaven. We talked about this message recently as well called Honey Doesn't Expire. God's taken the people to a land of milk and honey. And honey doesn't expire. If you care for honey properly, you store it properly, it doesn't expire. It lasts for thousands of years. Well, in a similar way, These things that God has kept for us in heaven. He's got these beautiful solutions for our life. The answers to the problems that we need more than enough for every demand that's coming our way in life. But they're kept in heaven until the demand is there, I believe, is what God's shown me. So we're going to be taking communion over this today. Asking for God for wisdom and insight and revelation into this but also for us to help us to walk in this principle, how to practically apply this into our lives, to see the fruit of it in our lives. But why are we taking communion every day? About 10 years ago, I pretty much had no spiritual life whatsoever. I was just doing my own thing, not really interested in the things of God at all. But my life really wasn't going the way I wanted to go. I was stressed out all the time. In fact, I remember going for a walk with my wife around the neighborhood And just telling her over and over, there's got to be a better way to live. There's got to be more to life than this. I was running my personal training gym business at the time. And the business was very up and down. I got some months where I'm losing thousands of dollars. I'm just stressed all the time with the business. But I was seeking for truth. I was traveling all over the country, studying with some of the best health and fitness experts in the world. Trying to learn, trying to grow, trying to find truth about how our bodies really work. But I really wasn't finding what I was looking for. And then one day I came across this challenge to start reading one chapter from the book of Proverbs every day. Proverbs has 31 chapters. So on day one of the month, you read Proverbs chapter one. Day two of the month, you read Proverbs chapter two. You keep going like that to the end of the month, and then you start back over again. And the challenge said, if you'll do this consistently, it will change your life. Well, I got started with this, and right away I began to see that my way of thinking and God's way of thinking were just totally not in alignment together. He began to renew my mind about some things. My relationship just started to grow a little bit with him. And then one day I came across this verse, Proverbs 13, 22. Just seemed to jump off the page at me one morning. 
It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking, what's the most valuable thing that we can pass on to future generations? And after some time of thinking about it and meditating on it, I came to the conclusion that the most valuable thing that we could pass on would be wisdom or teaching or training for how to truly live. And so I made a commitment that day. I'm going to create manuals. I'm going to create systems and teaching and training for all the different areas of life, areas like purpose and health and family and finances and time, all the different areas of life. But when I got started, I really had no clue where to start. So I began to seek God. And from that point on, my relationship with him just began to grow exponentially as I began to seek him for these answers. And his supply began to show up, began to teach me, he began to train me. And over the course of about 10 years now, it's turned into this program we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint with books and courses and partners. But out of everything we do in the Abundant Life Blueprint, the most important thing, the most important lesson is daily communion. Daily communion is what I call the number one table turner for all of life. It has the ability to turn the tables, to turn things around and change the trajectory of our lives going forward. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. It's this opportunity to stir his sacrifice into our mind and remembrance. You see, over and over in the Old Testament, God tells the people, don't forget me. Don't forget your covenant with me. It helps us to abide in Christ so that our lives produce much fruit. And the Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, you're proclaiming the death of Jesus, which in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all these benefits that are found in the new covenant. And personally, I've found, so I'm getting close. I've been doing these daily communion meditations, the videos like this, almost, I've done them every day, getting close, very close to a year now. One of the biggest things I've learned is communion serves as this opportunity where we're going to take these promises from God. We're going to activate them in our, in our lives. We're going to have a, a defining moment in time where we take communion over these promises as a marker to say, you know what? That was the time I believe I received that promise from God. And then from this point on in my life, I'm believing he's going to help me walk out that promise. There's something, like I said, it changes the trajectory of our lives. Every time we take communion, we can come out of it changed and different. Every time we take it. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, to take it with fear of the Lord, with awe and reverence and appreciation for the sacrifice of Jesus. And I think it's important we remember both sides of the cross. On one side, we remember God didn't have to send Jesus. He could have left us on our own, doing our own things, separated from him forever. He could have just left us. But he chose the way of love. He chose to do good for us, to give us grace. He sent his one and only son, and Jesus was willing to come. He's rejected by his own people, betrayed by his own disciple and close friend. He's got all the pressure on, the, on him in the garden, sweating drops of blood in the lead up to the cross. And then he spit on and hit and whipped and mocked and ridiculed, crown of thorns on his head. He's nailed to the cross. And the worst part of all, he's separated from God. He felt what it was like to have God against him. The cup of God's wrath was poured onto his body. He was destroyed. He became a curse for us. He became sin. His body was destroyed. But then on the other side, he's raised back to life. He's victorious over death. And that same victorious power now lives on the inside of us. He makes us right and holy and perfect in God's sight. He connects us back to God. Makes us God's children. So I think it's important we remember both sides of that. So the process we typically use, we start with about a two minute long prayer that's mostly scripture. Coming from Ephesians chapter 1 and the prayer of Jabez found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves. Because the Apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick and they die early. Because they don't examine or judge themselves before taking communion. And if communion has the power to do that in the negative, I believe it has the power to do the opposite of that in the positive if we'll take it the right way. To make us healthy and strong and give us long life. And then after our time of communion, we've been talking about some practical 
physical workout tips and advice. Because I truly believe physical exercise is supposed to be an expression of what it's like to exercise our faith. It teaches us how to practice that. How to receive this grace by faith. And to experience God doing the work through us. And then once we know how to do that, we can take those same principles and we can apply them into the other areas of our life as well. Let's get started with our prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening, their families, all those connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us. He was crushed by you. He was destroyed by you so that you could fight for us and be for us. I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Father, I ask you to bless us to make your face shine upon us and let us find grace and favor in your eyes, to expand our borders and our territory, to expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, your love and your goodness, and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. I ask you to send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. Help us be sensitive to those opportunities. I ask you to keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right, and best in your eyes, and to do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. We ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right, we're going to go through the other half of prayer. This is our time to talk about, are we making today a masterpiece, a time to examine ourselves? And remember, masters of anything are masters of the fundamentals. That's where we talk about executing these four fundamentals and bringing some presence and some energy and some fun into these fundamentals today. And how are we going to make today a masterpiece? We're going to get connected to the master. We have to have this eternal perspective with God, but our relationship with him has got to be brought down into today to impact the things that we do, the things that we speak, the things that we're thinking about today. So our first step, our first fundamental. Let's get positioned in the light today. This is the on-off switch. Either we're in the light or we're in the darkness. There's no in-between. And every day, got to keep repositioning ourselves back into the light. How are we going to do it? We're going to start with humility. Jesus says, you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven? you got to humble yourself like this little child. Just childlike faith and belief and humility. We're going to humble ourselves in relationship to God. Humble ourselves in relationship to other people. Because it's the humble who are given grace. It's the humble who are exalted and promoted. And we're going to receive this forgiveness from God. We're going to let it flow through us. We're going to forgive ourselves. We often forget to forgive ourselves in the middle. And we're going to let that flow through us to other people. Giving them the same love and grace and forgiveness that God has given us. And we're going to take our position in love today. Kind and patient and gentle. Always assuming the best keeping no record of wrongs, delighting in the truth, always hoping, always trusting, always persevering, because love never fails. We're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today, one of the greatest expressions of faith, and staying in position in gratitude and praise, one of the easiest ways to maintain our positioning all day long. And getting in position is a big deal, because being in position helps us to receive This abundant, sufficient supply that God has. Because when we step into the light, we're stepping into Christ. And God has taken everything that he has. 
And he put it all in Christ. He gave it all to Jesus because he was worthy and deserving of it. And we get this amazing opportunity that we get to be in him today. So this day today, we have access to his supply, his spirit and power and presence, his love and peace and joy, his mind and wisdom, his health and energy, his time and finances. It's all available today to be received. We have to learn how to get in position to receive it. And then we got to get it flowing through us out into the world where we see, can, see, can see the fruit of this. So our second step is to magnify the light. We're going to get in position first, and then we're going to start to magnify the light. To magnify is to make bigger or greater. It's going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all these good things through us. It's also going to get this new covenant rooted and established in our heart, where we have hearts that understand God's grace and keeps us more fixed and consistent and immovable when the issues and pressures of life come our way. And to magnify the light, it's all about what we focus on. Where's our focus and attention throughout the day? I think of it as meditation. When I think of meditation, I think of constant repetition. What are those things that we're just rolling over and over again on the inside? You probably had the example where you had some issue or problem, and the more you thought about it, the more you talked about it, the more you meditated on that problem. It seemed like the problem just grew bigger got more and more confused, got further away from the solution to the problem. So to magnify the light, well, in that same principle, it works in the opposite direction. We can magnify the things of God and they'll grow bigger. So we can magnify God's word today, his unfailing love and faithfulness, his mighty works that nothing's impossible with him. We can magnify our righteousness in Christ. We've got peace with God. We've got his blessing and favor on our lives. We can magnify every good thing that he put within us. We've got this treasure in jars of clay. We can magnify every good thing that all the things that are going well. All that God has already done in our life. Looking back at all he's already done. Because what he started, he's going to finish. He's going to see it through to completion. He's going to sustain it by the power of his word. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. It's simply choosing not to magnify them, to stop toiling away in our minds, trying to figure it all out, to let them go, to give them to God. And we're going to magnify him as bigger instead. We're going to focus on him. But he does give us a choice. We could choose not to do any of this. We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, bitterness, unforgiveness, venting, complaining, pouting, magnifying all the ways people have wronged us, all the issues and problems that we're facing today just toiling away in our own mind. That's where we're going to learn to recognize the symptoms. Because when we're at a position or we're magnifying the wrong things, there might be the tendency to retaliate at people. We might withhold good things that we know to do because someone did something we didn't like. We might avoid people or give them the silent treatment. And none of those are the way of unconditional love and grace. On the inside, you'll feel this heaviness and weight and pressure like it's all sitting on you. Might have feelings of hopelessness or helplessness or powerlessness. Like you're trapped or you're stuck. And you might say things like, you know what? It's never going to change. It's never going to get better. This is always going to be the way it is. Another big symptom is low energy. I think of it like a black hole. It just sucks the energy right out of you. Then emotionally, there's the fear and stress and worry. There's a toiling in our mind trying to figure it all out. We're dreading things in the future, envisioning all these worst case scenarios and things that could happen or might happen. But when we take our position in the light, there's this rest in our soul. There's this fullness and completeness in him. And when we rest, God goes to work. And now everything is free and easy and effortless and energizing because we've got his peace and his joy and his spirit, his power, his mind and wisdom. He's got more than enough time. He's got health and energy in there. It all just begins to flow. He begins to bring these beautiful solutions into our life. And where are those solutions kept? They're kept in heaven. As we take our position in the light, we increase the demand on this and these beautiful solutions flow into our lives. They've been waiting to be released, I believe, into our life. And if all this weren't enough, God gives us this amazing gift of grace. If we ever get off track, it just takes a moment to turn it right back around again. Every day, life's throwing stuff at us to try to knock us out of position. 
to try to get us to magnify the wrong things. And sometimes we miss it. If we ever miss it, it's learning to recognize those symptoms and get it back turned around quickly. How do we do it? We start with humility, humbling ourselves in relationship to God. Father, forgive me. I missed it. I'm off track right now. We receive that forgiveness from him. We forgive ourselves. If we need to say we're sorry to somebody else, we take those steps. Then we start praising him for his the grace and his goodness and his love. And I like to pray this very simple prayer. Father, thank you that what you put within me is more than enough to handle whatever's coming my way today. To handle all the demands of life today in a beautiful, graceful way. Help me to tap into it and cultivate it and see it flowing at a greater level in my life. Pray that simple prayer. You'll feel that weight lift off. You feel the peace and the joy and the energy just begin to flow through you again. Then our third fundamental. We got to stay tuned in today. Every day, God's trying to teach us and train us and navigate us throughout the day. But we got to stay tuned in to him. My favorite way to do this is with the journal before bed. And lately, we've been talking about implementing some filters at the top of our journal. These filters are commitments that we're making to walk in God's standards for our life. There's going to be times when we miss it, but it helps us to navigate throughout the day. These filters are short phrases or sentences that you might write. Just keep reinforcing every night in the top of your journal to keep it top of mind. It might say something like this. God is working continually for my good, and I'm going to do continually good for others. Then when we're tempted to stress or worry throughout the day, we got this reminder. Wait a minute. God's working behind the scenes for my good in this. I can't see it now, but he's working something for my good in this. When someone does something that pushes your buttons or gets under your skin throughout the day and you're tempted to snap at them or give them the silent treatment, you got this reminder. Wait a minute. God doesn't do that to me. I'm going to give this person the same grace God has given me. I'm going to do good for them. Even though they pushed my buttons, they did something I didn't like. And we've got that reminder to navigate us throughout the day. And then I like to start my journal with gratitude and praise to get in position. And then to magnify. What are all the things that went well today? What are all the ways I saw God showing up today? Because the more we look for them, the more of them we're going to see. And then I like to ask this question. God, what are you trying to show me today? And just get still and listen and reflect back over the day. It's important to get out of our heads and onto the paper because it helps us to remember and not forget. And then we've got to stay tuned in throughout the day. If you ever feel like you're losing that connection with God, just take one to two minutes. It doesn't take long. Just take one to two minutes. Take a couple of deep breaths. Get aware of his presence with you. Get charged up or powered up in him. Think of it like plugging in a phone. And then the final thing I've learned to do in my journal every night before bed, is to plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do? What do I know to do today? And that becomes the plan for the day. Because I learned sometimes I was getting out ahead of God. I'm toiling away in my mind, trying to figure things out, trying to force things to happen ahead of schedule. And I'm getting out ahead of him. On the other side, sometimes I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. And I'm getting behind him. What do I know to do today? And that becomes the plan for the day. And then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, excited for the day. And we remember this very important principle. That the first thing out of our mouth every morning sets the tone for the whole day. And as I began to learn this, I began to seek God. What's the best thing for us to say? And I really feel like he was taking me back to Genesis chapter 1. And saying, what's the very first thing you see me speak in the Bible? which is let there be light. So I've started doing this. I've started waking up first thing in the morning, right when I wake up, the first words out of my mouth, let there be light. And then I like to add, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And it's amazing. It's such a simple little thing, but it sets the tone for the whole day. You feel this just energy come into your body. And then we get connected with him. We start walking out that plan together with him with a willing heart and a good attitude and full confidence that he's right there with us every step of the way. And when we get to that place of this confident faith, his grace begins to surge through us. He begins to bring these beautiful solutions into our life. Solutions that have been kept in heaven for us. 
that we can't make happen on our own. We can't figure them out. There's these beautiful solutions he's got kept waiting for us in heaven to be released into our life. And beauty is attractive and magnetic and just begins to pull more and more of everything God has for us into our lives. Just take a look at a couple of scriptures today. Kept in heaven for you. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance, what God has for us, can never, honey never expires, perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance, where is it kept for you? It's kept in heaven for you. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, a lot of times I think we've, we've interpreted these verses as these things are kept in heaven, and you have no access to them until after we die. But I really believe God has been showing me that he's got these solutions for our life right now. There's things for the, for the age to come as well. But he's got some solutions for our life right now that are being kept in heaven for us, waiting to be reveal, revealed and released at the proper time. And we've got to put our trust in that. We've got to lean on that. It's this different way of living. So Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for you. We're thankful for all these amazing things that you've got kept Stored up in heaven. It says, heaven is the storehouse of your bounty. Father, we're asking today. For any of these things that are kept in heaven for us, that are stored in heaven for us, that are meant to be for this age that we're in right now, for this time that we're in right now. That you would help those things to be released, that we would walk in those things from this point on in our life. We're asking for your help with that today. We're asking for wisdom and understanding and insight into what you've got kept in heaven for us. We thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, you took the bread. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's just take a moment to remember both sides of the cross. On one side, God chooses to send his one and only son. He could have left us here on our own without him. But he loved us too much to do that. Jesus is rejected by his own people. He's betrayed by his own disciple. He's got all the pressure on him in the garden. He knows what he's about to go through. But he chooses to do it anyway. He submits himself to God. He was obedient even unto death. He spit on and hit and whipped, nailed to the cross, separated from God. God's wrath is poured onto his body. He's destroyed. But on the other side, he's raised back to life. He's victorious over death. And that same victorious power now lives on the inside of us. connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in God's sight, all through his one sacrifice. So Father, we're just so grateful for this bread and all that it represents. We ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. So after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, pour it out for the forgiveness of sins for many. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins, the Bible tells us. 
He's released us from darkness. He's transferred us into the light. We have this covenant relationship with God, this personal relationship with him. And I believe as we start walking in this, we start to experience these things that God has been storing up in heaven for us, waiting to be released into our life. We start walking in these things consistently. I've experienced some of these. Things that I could never make happen on my own, and God begins to release them into my life. And what did it do? It helped me to know him better. How much more he, how much he loves us, how much more we can trust in him and count on him, to lean on him. It's a beautiful thing. So, Father, we thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have a juice, you can take your juice. <clears throat> Just thinking of the verse right now, it talks about, I forget the exact language, how it goes, but something along the lines of no eye has seen, no ear has heard. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. I believe it goes on to say now he's revealing them to us by his spirit. What's been kept in heaven for us. Let's talk about some workout stuff here. So something I've been doing lately. We talked about recently. Felt like God was, was wanting to teach me a different understanding of how to be strong. And I feel like he's prompting me to do something in my workouts that's a little bit different than what I was doing, which is, for example, we were doing uh, on our daily communion workout. If you don't have the workout, if you go to our website, the Abundant Life Training Center .com, and you get on our email list, you'll get access to the workouts in the daily emails that come. But in those workouts, we got, for example, sets of eight reps on some exercises. And I really feel like God was having me take those. We do one set of eight reps, like on shoulder press or deadlift, these types of things. And to divide the set, instead of doing one set of eight, I would divide it and do two sets of four. Same total reps, but I'm dividing it into two sets. And I can use a slightly heavier weight. So I'm still doing the total eight reps, but my total workload is increasing. I'm also increasing the amount of activation that's in the body because I have to handle, it takes a little more activation of the body to handle a little heavier weight. And so I started dividing the sets up a little bit. Now the workout takes a tiny bit longer a little bit longer, but I feel like I'm seeing some some faster progress here by starting to divide the sets. Now I got to work on getting this into a system still, get it organized and structured into a system. But it's something I've started doing lately. But I hope this has been helpful for you. Well, I want to touch on something real quick. Why am I dividing the sets? I want you to think about how do our human bodies grow? How do they grow and strengthen? It starts as one cell. And then divides and becomes two cells, then four cells, then eight cells, then 16. And so I feel like that's kind of the principle I'm working off of here when we talk about dividing the sets. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com. <laughs>